Welcome, and thank you for joining the webinar today. My name is Amanda Jadro. I'm a Portfolio Manager with TRICOM. As an Administrative and Financial Solutions Provider to the staffing and consulting industry, it is our philosophy to be an active member in the staffing industry by staying abreast of the ever-changing marketplace. For that reason, TRICOM was pleased to launch the Industry Insider Webinar Series, designed to share our expert knowledge and resources with our fellow staffing industry colleagues. One of our core values is to build relationships and become a leading resource to staffing and consulting firms nationwide. Our presenter today is Jordan Priest. As a compliance consultant at CT Corporation, a Wolters Core, core company, Jordan helps small and mid-sized businesses create strategies to manage their state compliance and reduce operational risk. Jordan has worked in a number of industries, but has always focused on supporting business clients achieve their objectives. Prior to his time at CT Corporation, he worked as a financial at a financial services company helping clients improve their retirement portfolios. Jordan has a Department of Insurance license and received a bachelor's degree in marketing from Cal State University, Fullerton. CT Corporation is a leading provider of incorporation, legal, compliance, and trademark solutions. For over 120 years, they have been helping companies of all sizes. Their customers include 75% of the Fortune 1000 companies, 70% of the National Law Journal Top 250 law firms, and more than 300,000 startups and small businesses each year. A top challenge facing businesses today and is managing sprawling state compliance requirements. A common worst case scenario is that a business falls out of good standing, which may result in penalties or even cause administrative dissolution or revocation. In today's October Industry Insider Webinar, Jordan will discuss the most effective tactics for managing state compliance while reducing risk and cost to your business. Topics include the role of a registered agent as your compliance partner, the most common pitfalls causing noncompliance, steps you can take to reduce regulatory risk, and how to manage your entire state compliance effort. By the end of this session, you'll know how to simplify state compliance requirements. So please join me in welcoming Jordan. Thank you very much, Amanda. I, I appreciate the intro, and I want to thank everyone else as well uh, for attending the meeting today and being with me. Uh, my name, again, is Jordan Priest, and I'm with CT Corporation. And I will be talking to you today about registered agent services and how they can benefit uh, companies of all different sizes and what really re registered agent services are and how registered agents can help you maintain good standing with all of the different states where you are currently doing business. So to kick things off here a bit, a little bit about my company. Um, CT Corporation is the global leader in registered agent services. Uh, we've been operating for over 124 years, helping companies of all sizes, and we work with incorporation, legal, compliance, and trademark solutions across the board. Uh, to give you an idea of some of our clientele base, uh, we help over 300,000 startups each year manage their compliance. We work with roughly 80% of the Fortune 1,000 companies, as well as 70% of the top 250 law firms in the United States. So we have our hands um, really all across the board in helping a variety of different types of businesses across a whole slew of different industries. So first off, what is a registered agent? Most people struggle with answering this. Well, a registered agent is really a responsible third party who's registered in the same state in which a business entity was established and who is designated to receive service of process notices, correspondence from the Secretary of State, and other official government notifications. And these usually come in tax forms and notice of lawsuits on behalf of that corporation or an LLC. So to kind of su to sum everything up and simplify that, we act as the middleman in terms of communication between a state and a business. 
So to keep things interactive here, uh, we're going to start off with our first poll question just to kind of get a, a feel around there. And you can go ahead and select your answers on the right side of the screen and then hit the submit button below. And the first question is, who is the registered agent for your business? Have you appointed an employee at your company to act as your registered agent? Or maybe you're outsourcing that responsibility to your attorney or CPA firm. You might be using a commercial registered agent like my company, CT, or another service uh, third-party provider. Or you could be having a combination of, of a few different resources. You might use your attorney in one state. You might use a registered agent company in another state and an employee uh, at your own company in your home state. Or if it's E, not sure, be sure to go ahead and select that as well. I speak with many people who, um, CEOs and CFOs, who have other people appoint their registered agent. give you some time here to go ahead and select your answer. Okay, so with the results coming back in here, I'm showing that a majority of you out there um, are self-representing or you're appointing an employee at your company. It could be yourself, could, could be um, you know another member of the board to act as your registered agent. Um, that was about half of you, and then 25% weren't sure. And for the for the not sure crowd, that's a lot more common as well uh, that I get that answer because. Many times they'll either go through their attorneys or they'll have someone else do the appointing for them. And so we'll go ahead and talk about some of those risks of self-representing um, down the line. Okay, so why do you need a registered agent? And the first thing I always tell, I always tell prospects and clients is it's the law. You have to select a registered agent to accept documents on your behalf. Uh, the state in which your business is registered needs to know that it has a contact person for your business within that state at all times. It's a way for them to get a hold of you. So ultimately, if the state can't find you, the company is going to be in trouble, whether that's from a liability perspective or whether that is from a fines and penalties perspective. So it's very important to appoint a registered agent on behalf of your company. Now, there's three things that a registered agent really has to have and do. The first is have a physical mailing address um, that's in that state where that company is operating. And no, it cannot be a P.O. box. It has to be a physical location where an individual resides. And that individual has to be available year-round during the normal business hours of that state agency. And it's usually 8 to 5 uh, where you have to be in the office to go ahead and receive that service of process. And then the major role of the registered agent in the must is to forward notification of service of process to the correct person at the company. And that could be a tax bulletin, wage garnishment, lawsuit, um, really any state communications. So back to the self-appointing and can I be my own registered agent, something I hear all the time. Well, the answer is yes, you can, but there are a number of risks that are involved when you self-appoint and represent yourself. The first is that the individual won't be in the office um, to receive service of process. When clients ask me, Jordan, you know, can I go ahead and just act in my home state here where I have an office as my registered agent? I say yes, but do you ever go on vacation or do you ever go out to lunch? Um, these are times when, when lawsuits can come into the office, and if you're not there to receive them at all times from that 8 to 5 duration, you're looking at default judgments, you're looking at penalties, um, so you need to make sure that you are within those hours at the office all day, every single day, just in case anything was to come in that you need to be made aware of. Uh, the second risk is that information won't be updated in a timely manner. If the, individ if the individual that you appoint at your company um, either leaves the company itself or maybe changes states, that agent's name and address on the file with the state, it has to be updated immediately. And if there's really any gap in time before the record updates the company, uh, you, you may not receive that litigation that's coming through. And if that happens, again, you're looking at default judgments, 
um, and more fines and penalties for failure to comply. And then the last, the, the last uh, risk here is really ignoring or mishandling process. Um, these documents, when they come in, they can look just like other regular pieces of mail that you receive. And if, you had, if you're acting it on your own behalf, you might put that down, mix that with papers, you could throw it in the trash by accident. It, you might not even notice that it is a lawsuit that is sitting on your desk. And having that registered agent eliminates that risk. We're letting you know, hey, something important came through. You need to respond to this. And action needs to be taken care of immediately. So our job is really mis uh, risk mitigation. To give you an example of that, um, I had a client in Texas who had an employee out there who was the agent on behalf of the company. Well, that agent ended up retiring, and they had been sued in Texas. Well, when the state went to go ahead and deliver the suit, um, that agent was no longer with the company. And so automatically, just for that failure to maintain compliance, um, my client actually ended up defaulting on a $10,000 judgment. I know the example shows 27, but this probably happened within the last two months. So it's very important that those records are constantly up-to-date, accurate, and people are available to receive those service of process documents. Now moving on to some of the benefits, the good stuff of having a registered agent for you. Well, besides not having to worry about missing you know, any of your important documents, having a registered agent also means that you will not have to accept potentially embarrassing legal and tax documents in front of clients. Put yourself in this situation. You are meeting with a very high-end prospect that you're trying to sell a product or a service to. And right in the middle of your meeting, in walks an individual who slaps you with a lawsuit. What kind of image does that go ahead and portray to the prospect that you are involved with in that moment? We eliminate that having to happen because service of process would now be being delivered to your professional registered agent company instead of your home offices. Another advantage is that as your registered agent's address will remain the same, we're not moving, you can easily change your business locations if you decide to move without having to file all of the paperwork and amendments with the state records to have that address changed every single time that you move. So it saves you money and it saves you time and it keeps you protected at all times by using the registered agent in that area. So now if I'm sure some of you have kind of been looking at going out and finding a registered agent, and there's a slew of different companies out there. So this is really a, a checklist for you and things to take into consideration in why you should choose a specific registered agent that's right for you. And the first question that you really want to ask is what's included in their services? Are they merely providing representation in all my different states? Or maybe there's other offerings that they go ahead and provide, such as annual report service. Um, those are the filings that you have to file with the state every single year. Some companies will go ahead and take that completely off your plate. Um, where are all of their offices located? If they're only in one state and you end up going into a new state, will that registered agent that you've appointed be there to grow with you? Or are they already in all 50 states? Are they manned by professional staff? Or is that registered agent turning around and now outsourcing to other individuals instead of having a full team there around the clock to receive your important documents when they come in? Do they work with the state at all, or are they really outsiders? And what's their credibility like? How long have they been in business? Um, what type of clientele base do they have? How do they operate? What's their current standing with the BBB? These are all important things to, to consider when you're selecting a registered agent, because after all, we are talking about the health of your business at the end of the day. So we know now a little bit on the representation side, but let's talk about some additional requirements that I'm sure many of you are already very familiar with, annual reports being one of them. Those are those annoying things that you file with the secretaries of state every year to let the states know that you're continuing to operate. And each state has a different annual report, uh, report requirement. Some will go ahead and request, um, you know, a, a corporate tax filing in addition to the annual report. Some will just want your list of officers and your address. It really depends. But registered agents, go ahead and take that off your plate. You also, I'm sure, are very familiar with your industry-specific business licenses that you have to maintain and renew every single year, two years, four years, whatever um, your license particularly is. But you know that a failure to maintain those renewals can end up resulting in more fees, fines, penalties, and liability for your company. 
using a registered agent to manage those tasks that can slip through the cracks when you get busy or when you grow really protects the company and it gives you peace of mind that you no longer have to maintain those requirements and will still be in good standing with the Secretary's estate. The perils of noncompliance. This, I think, is, is fascinates me because a, a majority of the business owners that I speak with aren't even aware of what happens when they become compliant or didn't know that they were even noncompliant in the first place. And the, the biggest things that I like to talk with them about is that whenever you become noncompliant or revoked with one of the states that you're doing business in, and that particular state doesn't even have to notify you that you are noncompliant, is that you lose access to the courts. So if one of your clients in that jurisdiction turns around and sues you, you can't fight the lawsuit in the first place. You would receive a default judgment automatically. On top of that, all of the officers at your firm can be held personally liable if anything was to go ahead and happen. So maintaining compliance with the state can have huge and devastating effects on your, on your company and, in fact, has, have bankrupted companies in the past. And again, registered agent services keeps you in compliance and active and in good standing with the states, eliminating those possibilities from ever happening in the first place. Okay, so now moving on to our second poll question here. Um, in the next two years, what do you think your business is going to do? Will you guys be growing into new states? Will you be contracting and maybe withdrawing from certain states? Is the market right now at a point where you just kind of need to stay the course and you're not looking to really grow or shrink but just maintain? Or D, um, you're not really sure what's going to happen over the next couple of years. Go ahead and select your answer on the right and then uh, hit submit, and we'll go ahead and get back to this in a second. Okay, so with the results coming back in, um, I'm actually seeing some pretty positive results where the responses are looking to expand, and that's fantastic that a lot of you are in the position um, to be able to grow into new states and really expand the company, and it looks like everything's developing very well. So through expansion, there's a couple things that you need to be aware of if that's the case in filing qualifications in a new jurisdictions and maintaining the compliance of a new state which is going to be separate than the states where you're currently doing business. All of the states are unique and have different requirements for filings, for rules and regulations that companies need to be aware of when entering into new jurisdictions. So now looking at a real typical third-party registered agent model, this kind of shows you all of the products and services that are involved in the registered agent industry. And these are things that I'm sure some of you are familiar with, um, but that you usually have to pay separately on an a la carte basis every single time you render one of these services. And we're talking about representation, uh, the annual report managed service, corporate filings, and compliance tools. And if I can go ahead and point your attention to the green bubble, the corporate filing services, just to be clear and, and shed some light, those are filings like qualifications, amendments to the state records, uh, certificates of good standing, withdrawals, if you're um, converting from an LLC to an Inc. or vice versa, those are all, those are all transactional services um, under the corporate filings that you need to file with the Secretary of State to go ahead and make compliant. Every time you qualify in, into a new state, there's a new transaction and a new fee that you have to incur um, every time you go in. And now with my company, CT Corporation, we have a product called CT Assurance, which was designed specifically 
for smaller to medium-sized businesses. It's newer to the industry. I uh, just won an award, actually. But what it does is everything is done for a flat fee, and we provide all services to your firm to keep you in compliance and to take those filings like annual report managed services, qualifications into new states off your plate. And this way it saves the company time and it also saves you money where now you're not having to pay for those a la carte transactions which can add up to huge, huge fees at, by the end of the year. Um, and just the time it takes to do the annual report filings, to be checking in with the different states, make sure everything's going through and all the time vested. We give you a little of that time back and take over all of those responsibilities on your behalf. To touch on that a little bit further, um, CT Assurance just won in the American Business Award uh, called the Stevie Award for Product of the Year. Like I said, it, it's been around now for about a year to a year and a half and will eventually be the future of our industry. Um, brand new, it's been very, very successful and businesses are very thankful that there's an opportunity now to be able to just for a flat fee, allow them to manage their spend, have everything taken care of, and no longer now need to worry about maintaining the compliance themselves. The ball is now in CT's court. Uh, we also have a, if you look at the bubbles down below, we have a government legal precedent team. We're the only registered agent that works directly with the states on this relationship basis. And we support over 1.6 million business entities. And for each and every single one of these entities, one of the biggest things that CT Corporation does for, for clients is monitor their business entities. Working with the states directly, we can see if there's issues from other state departments within the Secretary of State Department. We can fix issues for free, and we can let you know way ahead of time before things snowball in, into a huge problem um, and address those issues immediately. Again, 124 years of experience. And with CT Corporation, not only are we actually in all 50 states with fully staffed offices, we're in 160 countries. So there's no situation where companies can outgrow CT. We're a huge public $4 billion traded company, and we've been the most trusted partner since we created the industry 124 years ago. Now, that said, this is our first year partnering with Tricom, and there's a couple things that we're actually doing for all of Tricom's clients. Um, and I'll give you a second here to jot down my email address. Um, so get a hold of me, too, with any questions that pop up down the line. Or if you want advice or some counsel, I'm more than happy to go ahead and provide that for you. But one thing that we are doing is providing free state compliance audits for all of TRICOM's clients. A lot of, of clients and prospects that I speak with on a daily basis um, will go ahead and pay for this audit and then come to find out that they have been revoked in three different states and had no clue that all this liability and all these fees have been accruing over time that, they are, that are due. Um, so what we're doing, or what, what it really is, um, to kind of simplify it in, in layman's terms, is that we're giving you a quick snapshot of how your company looks in all of the jurisdictions through the eyes of the Secretary of State. If there's any discrepancies, delinquencies, um, revocations, we can bring them to your attention. You can be proactive about them um, and take care of any problems at, before they snowball. What we'll also be sending all of TRICOM clients is a, uh, our new um, highly praised book, What Constitutes Doing Business. And this is to help those companies that aren't really sure if they need representation or a registered agent in a certain state because of their industry or the type of business that they have. Um, it, it goes through state by state to let you know where you need to have registered agent services. And this is our, our exclusive offer to all of TRICOM's clients. We, we charge for um, both of these products on a daily basis. But for you guys, um, everything is included. So send me an email if you want to have that done, and uh, we will go do a thorough compliance search on your company and verify that you're active and in good standing in all of your states. So at this point, uh, we have concluded the presentation. I want to thank again all of you for joining me and being with me for the presentation. I want to open up the floor for any questions and answers that you might have or want me to touch in on again. I'm more than happy to do that. So I will go ahead and give you some time um, to answer a question in the box below, and uh, we will go ahead and get started with, once those questions come in. Okay, Jordan, I have a couple of um, questions that have come in, um, and for others, go ahead and enter your question in either the Q&A or the chat feature, and I will read them off for Jordan to answer for you. 
how can I change my registered agent to CT Corporation? Okay. So um, whether you're using a current registered agent company or you're doing things yourself or you're not even sure, the switch to, to CT Corporation is very simple and it's very low work on your side. CT takes care of all of the filings with the states um, to do the change of agents and bring you over, and then we send you the evidence um, as each state accepts CT as the new agent, and it starts right from there. Uh, in addition to that, we also eat the state fees to go ahead and bring you over um, to CT Corporation. Uh, the states will have different price points and what they charge for a change of agent. Um, maybe it's $50 in one state or $20 in another state, $100 in another state. Um, but we'd be paying all of that on our end to bring you over and consolidate you within the CT family. Wonderful. Good I had a question, question well. um, asking for your email address. So I have put that on the screen again. Again, uh, you can reach out to Jordan directly and he'd be happy to uh, provide you with those TRICOM exclusive offers. Um, additionally, uh, another question has come in. Can you tell me if there are different frequencies for annual filings based on uh, the particular states? Almost all of the states require a filing every single year. There are a couple states, though, um, where filings are biennial. So every two years you'd have to go ahead and file. But for everything else, it's usually annually, every single year, you're filing to the same department, which is the Secretary of State. Uh, but the only difference is that each state has a different uh, filing requirement. So the information on the annual reports themselves uh, will be different. But the filings will still need to take place uh, almost every single year for all of the states you're doing business in. Now, is that annual report due at the end of the year, or is it based on when you started doing business? in that state? It's usually based on when you started doing business in that state, and so then at the end of that year, the annual report is really your renewal. It's also referred to as a registration renewal. Um, so it's saying if you incorporated in January 1st or you started doing business there in January 1st of 2016, your annual report will be due January 1st, 2017. So it's really, think of it more as a, of a renewal of when you started doing business in that state. Okay, so for clients that are uh, going into new states you know, at, at various different points in time throughout the year, they may have many different annual reports due throughout the year at different states. It's, it's not as easy as, you know, once a year going in and paying all those fees or doing those filings. Correct, right. So if you entered into a new state in June, you're going to have to file that renewal in June, every single June. Um, other states are going to be February, so they're all over the place. They're going to come in at different times, so it's really important that you stay on top of those annual report filings, because if they don't go through, you end up um, with either a delinquency and then ultimately a revocation, and then that's where all of those perils of compliance come back into play. And you guys monitor that um, for the client, so you're making sure that they're always making those um, reportings on time. Now, if there are fees due, how, how does that work if you're under a, um, a, a package deal? Okay. So a couple things. First, for the annual reports, we do have the option where we go ahead and notify you of when filings are due. Um, but the second option is, and this is what most clients prefer, is to have us just do the filings for them. Um, that is another service. That's an annual report managed service where we completely take those annual reports off your plate. We're doing the, uh, the monitoring, the tracking, and the filing of the annual reports, so it's very hands-off. You don't even have to think about them. Um, and I, I'm sorry, what was, the, what was the second half of that question regarding the fees? Uh, many times you have to actually pay a fee to the state at the time that you do that annual report, and, and how does how does that work? Um, okay, good question. We're now taking that process on. Okay, so from a state fee perspective, one state might charge you fifty dollars, another state might charge you twenty dollars to go ahead and do that. What okay. CT Corporation will do is to make sure that everything is done in advance and on time. Is we'll actually pay those state fees in advance. Um, just to make sure that it gets in there, you're good to go, there's no issues. And then what we'll do is forward you a, um, a state invoice for how much the state charged. And we'll do that on a consolidated monthly basis to keep it simple for you. Very nice. Okay, great. 
what happens if my company fails to register or designate a registered agent in a, in a specific state that they're doing business? Well, if you completely fail altogether to designate a registered agent and you're operating in that state, technically you're doing business illegally. Um, and that opens up the floor to all of those perils of compliance. Um, if the state eventually finds out about that, you can be slapped with huge penalties and fines. Um, but also it opens you up from a liability perspective. Again, the lawsuits. You don't have access to the courts in that jurisdiction because you failed to maintain that compliance. If anything was to come in, um, ultimately that company would be up a creek because there's no way to defend against that when you don't have that type of access. And also, too, those fines and, those fines and penalties can be uh, pretty steep. And in many states, they'll accrue fees over time until those issues are addressed. Okay. Does my business really need to file an annual report? And the, the answer to that one is yes. Um, and I think we touched on that one a little bit earlier here. But every single year, the state law requires companies to file these annual reports. And if you don't fa file that annual report, what will ultimately happen is you'll go from a good standing status with the state, and then that will be changed over into a delinquent status. And that delinquency status can range per state. It just kind of depends on that unique state's laws. Some days it's 30 days, in some states it's 60 days. And once that goes through, um, they change your status from delinquent, where there's just fees involved, to now revoked, where there's bigger fees and fines, as well as it opens up liability, because the corporate veil no longer applies um, when a company is revoked with the state jurisdiction. So it's very, very important to go ahead and get those filings in and stay on top of those. So how do you get yourself back in good standing if your company has now been revoked? Is there a process for that? You know what, it's, it's, it varies per state. Um, some states will allow you, if it's been within a certain amount of time, they'll allow you to file a reinstatement with their department. Um, if that's the case, it'll just be a fee and then a couple forms that you'll have to fill and then you're, you're, they'll put you back in a good standing in their state. Um, other states, that doesn't happen. You'd have to completely requalify into that state because once you go bad, um, they, they cut the ties altogether with your business, and so you'd have to apply again to start doing business there legally. And now for staffing companies, uh, they are frequently in and out of states across the country, you know, just kind of the nature of the business. So, for example, uh, you know, if I'm in Florida and, you know, I'm going to do business in Georgia uh, and, and maybe my contract with that company in Georgia has ended within that 12-month period, I may or may not go back into that state. It just depends if, if there's new business there. How do you suggest a staffing company handle that? That's, do they continue that's a very... Going? Yeah. You know what? It, it really depends on the situation. Um, to give you an example, let's say that you're in Florida and you're no longer doing business in Florida. If you're not going to be there for the, for the remainder of the year or even the year after that, we always go ahead and recommend you want to file a proper withdrawal with the state. You need to let the state know you're exiting and you're exiting properly. Um, and there's going to be a few different forms and, and types of things you're going to have to go ahead and submit to the State Department to get that approved. But that way, um, you've done everything through the proper channels, and now there's no longer any risk on the table or fees. Florida, for example, if you were to just leave it open, um, would end up revoking you, and their fee every single year for noncompliance is $1,000. Um, so if you were looking to do business in that state, maybe again in five years, you'd try to requalify, but first you'd have to pay $5,000 on top of everything else um, to rectify your situation with the Secretary of State. So it, it, it really depends on how soon you're looking to go in and out back into that same state. If you're going in and out every six months, we recommend just staying and keeping everything open. Um, it'll make your life a lot easier, and at the end of the day, it'll save you a lot of money. But if you're not going to be in that state again for a little while, you definitely want to go ahead and have that closed down properly to eliminate risk and just to eliminate the need to maintain the compliance in that state. Right, and allow you to go back in should you ever want to with, without, you know, additional fees. 
fees or paperwork that has to get processed, you know, because typically when there's an order, there's an order, you're moving pretty fast on that stuff. Um, so you don't want to have to jump through some hoops to try and get reinstated. Um, exactly. So if CT when, were uh, managing that for a client, would they just, you know, contact their representative and say, you know, I'm no longer doing business in this state, and then you guys would be able to file paperwork to close things out properly? Correct. It's, it's a very simple process for our clients. If they no longer want to be in our state they, or in a state, it's as simple as just pivoting to us and pivoting to me, telling me, Jordan, we're going to be getting out of here. Can you close this out or can you have us properly withdrawn? Um, I do all the paperwork. I take care of everything with the state and all the communication. And then what we do is get evidence that the state has accepted the forms, everything was done correctly and proper, and then we forward that evidence on to you to keep for your internal records. Wonderful. And if they're doing this themselves, they want to make sure that whoever's managing these um, items in their office is, um, you know, kind of taking those extra steps even, um, you know, when they're moving out of a state, which maybe they're not always thinking of. Right. And a big thing that we find with people that are doing it themselves is they'll have someone file the form, but then they don't go ahead and collect the evidence. Um, and the states aren't infallible. So sometimes they might come back and say, well, you know what, we never got this filing. Um, you owe us this amount of money. Because the states, in a lot of cases, act like a business themselves. So it's very important that when you are making a move or doing anything with the states that you're keeping evidence on file just in case anything happens down the line where you have to prove that it was accepted beforehand. Wonderful. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and open up a poll. You can give us a little bit of feedback on today's presentation. Um, I have a couple other questions that have come up. Um, are you talking about temp contract perm or direct hire in, in states? So uh, as far as doing business in states, is it the filings, um, do they need to be for temp contract like perm placement? or direct hire work, or both? That is something that, that, from a legal perspective, would be in the PDF that we would go ahead and send out to you in the what constitutes the doing business in that state. So if you're not sure if, because it, it might apply in one state and it might not apply for another state. So to be 100% positive, that one of the things we're giving the TRICOM clients is that, um, that expectations book and can let them know what that would pertain to if they need it or if they don't. Okay, so they can just email you and then you'll be able to send them that uh, book, that electronic document that lets them know what's constituting doing business in that state and, and what applies to them, correct? Correct, and it's, an, it's for all 50 states too. And it's, it's simple to read, it lists it out, and you just match what reflects with you and you're good to go. Okay. And, and this may be kind of along the same lines, but um, is there uh, a difference in approach for direct hire in different states versus temp placement? So I think that's just clarifying that question. And, and that is, again, um, what constitutes doing business in that particular state. And each state makes their own requirements on that. Right. I understand. Right. That. So each it, – what, what applies to one state may not apply at all to another state and vice versa. So you want to make sure that you're getting the nail on the head there and going in the right way with, for the right reasons. Good. You know, another thing, too, uh, many times uh, if you're trying to bid on business in, in, you know, for a specific customer or client, frequently they are checking to see if you are in good compliance and that you have uh, the ability to do business in that state. That is something a lot of times. If you're not checking, maybe your customers are, uh, so it's something that you want to keep in mind, too. Right. And actually, that's one of the benefits of our CT Assurance Program, because um, it includes those corporate filings. So if you're just going in there for a bid or whatever it may be, where you're not technically there yet, you're going to see if you're going to be there. We do all the work to get you there, and then as soon as you're ready to leave, we go ahead and take you out, and all of the, all of the filings the, the statuses that you need, the requirements for that, are going to keep you protected the entire time, with, and you won't have to go ahead and pay for those types of filings and services. It's just included. Wonderful. Well, if there are any other questions, um, you can go ahead and, and submit them in, in today's session, or you can email either Jordan or myself directly and be happy to, to get you answers and 
um, guide you in any way that we can as far as registered agent services um, apply. Do you have any other final thoughts um, that you can share for our audience or um, common questions that you get? You know what? I, I just want to let everyone know, never hesitate to get a hold of me. I have, I'm always on my email. If you have questions, want a second opinion on anything, want some, a second pair of eyes at something that you're doing, never hesitate to reach out. Um, ask me additional questions. Give me a call. I'm, I'm always happy to talk on the phone. I find that sometimes on the phone there, there can be a little more clarity, and I can make sure that we're on the same page as we're going through things. But I'm always available, and don't hesitate to get a hold of me. Wonderful. Well, I certainly appreciate your time today and, and all of the information that you were able to share um, and absolutely the uh, free items that you can provide to the TRICOM clients uh, to make sure that they are in good shape in all the states that they are looking to do business in. Uh, I'd like to thank our participants for joining us in the webinar today, Registered Agent Services Compliance Simplified. The presentation slides will be available. Uh, the, the presentation slides can be available if you'd like me to email them to you. Just let me know. We will have a recording available on our website. It will be at tricom.com under the Resources and Industry Insider Webinars tab. Thanks again for your participation and continue to watch for additional information on our next webinar session. We host these monthly and we look forward to seeing you in our next session. Have a fantastic afternoon. Thank you.